Hello and welcome to RT Ministries. My name is Dwayne and this is the, I think, Let's Talk today. Let's talk. I heard, uh, I keep hearing a lot of things about the gospel and of course we all should hear about the gospel, but what is the true gospel? You know, most churches say they spread the gospel or talk about the gospel, but, you know, the gospel means good news. And it is certainly good news that Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. <clears throat> He paid the price. He rose again. He's not a dead Savior. He's a live Savior. And that is the good news. But is that all there is about the gospel? Um, there's a few pieces that... that there's a few pieces that people, move, that le people leave out before they get to the good news, before they get to the gospel. You know, Jesus started his sermon. Jesus started his ministry at 30 years old saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, right? You know, there's a message in the Bible to all human beings. You know, before the news can be good or the, before the good news is good, there's got to be some bad news first, right? I mean, you just walk up to somebody and say, Jesus died for your sins and, you know, he rose again. Now he's, he wants to forgive you and, you know, bring you into heaven with him and make, it, make you a child of his. That's really not good news unless somebody knows the other pieces before the good news, right? There's pieces you can't leave out. The good news doesn't make any sense when you haven't heard the bad news first. And I know in today's society, it's certainly not a... In 2019, I know nobody wants to make anybody feel bad because we, we live in a psychologized world that we always got to pump people up and make them feel better. Um, and it certainly has bled into the church because most churches right now are just feel good. Like AA groups, they meet, they make everybody feel good. They say, we're here for you. You know, the, it's just a little cheering. Most churches have turned into a little group of cheers to keep pumping people up and make them feel good. And I'm afraid most churches make people feel good in their sin. Sin isn't talked a whole lot about anymore. Righteousness, our condition before God, it's all put your trust in Jesus. Believe in he died on the cross, you know, put your faith in him and you're saved. It's a little bit more than that. First, the condition. Listen, most people don't want to hear the condition of themselves. Most, you know, all people who are, all people are born in sin and we're all we're all, according to the Bible, wicked, right? I wouldn't even know how wicked we are. When the trouble with most churches is they've been psychologized so much, they don't know how wicked they are. Most people, excuse me, most people think they're good. I assure you the Bible doesn't teach that. You know, a lot of people talk to me about the Bible, about God, and I, first thing in my mind, I'm, I would like to ask them, have you ever really read the Bible? You know, there was a gal the other day that told me all Jesus ever taught was love. That's all he taught was love. Is that true? Listen, Jesus preached on hell more than anybody in the Bible. So, you know, it isn't all that Jesus talked about. Love is not all he talked about. And I, I want to ask these people, have you ever read the Bible? So listen, before you tell somebody the good news, and before it can even be good, you got to tell them the bad news. You are separated from God. You are wicked to God. We have, we have sinned against God the Most High. We have a debt to God that we cannot pay. And now the news, news you know, seems a little better now. You know, <laughs> you know, you got to condemn somebody before you save them, right? And we are all stand condemned before God. Listen. Oh, Listen, listen to me close. Everybody in hell thought they were good enough. Everybody in heaven knows they weren't. The Bible says, blessed are the poor in spirit. That means, you know, blessed are those who really know how sinful they are and really put their faith and trust in God. So listen, you, anybody you out there, you're wicked towards God. When God sees you, you stand condemned. You know, I, I drive past a sign every just about every day that says God loves you. Is that true for everybody out there? That God loves you. Listen, we're all stand con. This is the this is everybody's born and lives into this world. Everybody has the wrath of God over them. 
And everybody has to turn from their sin and everybody has to admit their wickedness to God and everybody has to put their faith in Christ Jesus before the love of God is shown you. You know, according to Psalm 7, God is hates the wicked, right? He's angry at the wicked every day. Listen, everybody who's not in Christ, God's angry with you every day. The good news can only be good when you finally hear the bad news and you stand condemned. Listen, only those who know they are sinful and those that they only those who know they have offended a holy and trust just God will come to Jesus Christ. Instead, we skip the first part, the condemnation part, just kind of give them the good news and say, come, put your faith in Christ. And everybody makes a shallow faith, you know, a shallow uh, testimony. Or they're, you know, no light, their life hasn't changed. And yeah, I put my faith in Jesus Christ and their life never changed. They have nothing but problems. They have problems, you know, they try to deal with their sin in a human manner and they have nothing but trouble because they don't have the power and they don't have the Holy Spirit inside of them to actually... Give them the power to stop sinning. Listen, don't give the good news unless you're willing to condemn somebody. Because it doesn't make any sense. All you will do is produce a false convert. And that's what I'm afraid. Most churches are full of people who think they're saved, but they're not. All they are is religious. They come to church. You know, they don't smoke. They don't drink. They don't do all that stuff. But that's not being a Christian. Listen, that's not a Christian. There's a lot of unbelievers out there. There's a lot of wicked people out there that don't swear, they don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't do any of that. So that's not what a Christian is. A Christian, listen, a Christian knows that they have fallen far short of God. They're ashamed of their wickedness. They know they're wicked. So they come to the mercy. <laughs> they come for mercy with God and ask him to forgive you and put their trust, full trust and full faith in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. That is somebody saved. They're not a perfect person, but they are saved. They love the Lord. They hate their sin. They know their condition. And because they know their condition, their faith is in what Jesus did on the cross and nothing else. Listen, when I get to heaven, I'll give all the credit to God because only God got me there. Nothing Dwayne has done has ever even helped my salvation has never added to it has added nothing to it listen you're not given the full you're not given the true picture of the gospel uh, without giving the first part the condemnation part and listen most pre preachers teachers preachers and people will not give that first part because they don't want to make anybody feel bad well they don't want to offend anybody listen jesus says he is an offense Jesus Christ said he was, he's a stumbling block. He's an offense to people. Why is he an offense? When you reject him, he's offensive. People don't like the real Jesus. There's people all over in churches that are worshiping a different Jesus that doesn't even exist. And I've talked to people inside of churches that tell me that Jesus is a loving, all he ever preached about is love. Have you ever read the Bible? Have you never read? I mean, it almost floors me talking to people who they think Christ is. They swallowed a false Jesus. The true Jesus Christ demands righteousness. The true Jesus Christ demands repentance before you come to him. The true Jesus, you have to recognize who you are. Church is not a feel good. It's not, it's not there to make you feel good. It's there to keep you... You know, if you don't hear correct sermons, you're going to be off. You're going to be off base. You're going to... I need to be reminded of how sinful I am. That's why reading is important. But the gospel cannot be good news unless you hear the bad news. Once you stand condemned, I'm telling you, the good news is, will be the good news to you. So before you tell somebody the good news, tell them that the wrath of God remains on. You can read John 3. The wrath of God is on everybody, all people. Listen, if you die without Christ, you die and the wrath of God comes down and you will be cast into hell. That goes for everybody. Listen, few find it. You got to warn people. When you give them the gospel, the gospel is a command to believe the gospel, right? You know, you give them the bad news, you, you condemn them. And this is where you might lose a bunch of friends and people, but you condemn them and then give them the good news and then give them a warning at the end. Why a warning? Because the gospel, believing the gospel is a command. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. And tell them, if you do not believe the gospel, if you do not put your faith in Christ, you stand condemned, right? You are already condemned. 
You have nothing but judgment to look forward to. Listen, God will judge people and God will judge you. If you refuse to come to him, God will judge you. And here's another warning. In Hebrews, don't turn away from God. When you, when you understand what the gospel is, when you understand that you're a sinner, when you understand all that, don't turn away because there's no other sacrifice left for you. If you turn away from the truth, if you understand the truth and turn away from it, you might never not ever have a chance again. Because according to the scripture, Jesus said, you can't come to me unless the Father has sent me draws you. Listen, you can't even convict yourself. The Holy Spirit has to convict you. If if the Holy Spirit's convict you and you somebody's told you the gospel, you had better, and I I warn you, you had better turn to the Lord because now you're responsible for more. If you refuse Christ and trample the blood of Christ by refusing him and going about your own way, you have just, you know, you have just made judgment much more severe on you. Listen, God is not a... God is not a wicked judge. He doesn't overlook sin. A judge will overlook people, will overlook criminals. God will never overlook them. And if you're one of these people who say, God, you know, weigh the good and the bad, God, the guy in the sky, he'll, you know, he'll let me in. Listen, God will never let anybody in who doesn't come through his son. That goes for Muslims, that goes for Jehovah Witnesses, that goes for Mormons, that goes for Hindus, that goes for Buddhists, that goes for everybody, atheists goes for everybody. God will never, listen, God will never be unjust. If you refuse Christ, you will get exactly what you deserve in hell. And that goes for you, that goes for everybody. You stand condemned being born. You don't have to be born. We don't, we're not born and then we sin. We're born a sinner. That's what the Bible teaches. According to Psalms and David, you're my mother in sin, my mother conceived me. We got passed down from Adam. We got we're our sinners born sinners. Some point in your life, it has to change. The Bible says that you're separated from God. Your sin has separated you. And you have offended a holy God. And you've built up wrath on yourself. The longer you live, the more wrath you're building up. Jesus came to save you from that wrath. That's Here's where the good news comes in. Jesus died on the cross. He took your punishment, your punishment that you deserve, he took. He died and he was, he, 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 three days later he was, he got up from the grave. The grave can't hold him because he's God. Now he has the power to forgive sins. Now isn't that good news? Once you know you stand condemned, that's better news. Now it's the good news. You can be forgiven. Now the warning. Now you know the truth. Don't turn away. Come to him. Today is the day of salvation. Come to Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sin. Humble yourself. And listen, admit you're a sinner. Admit you offended him. and Admit you're wicked. And this is where most people will not do it. They just don't think they are. Well, again, most people in hell, all people in hell, thought they were good. All people in heaven knew they were bad. Well, I'm going to end up by saying, look, the good news is more good, <laughs> is a lot more good news when you know the bad news first. So if you're going to tell somebody, tell them the whole truth. Don't just spit the gospel out without telling them their condition. Because most people do not know their condition. They think they're better than they are. And that's what you have to crush. Yes, you have to crush them. And a lot of people, if you're not willing to crush them, then you're not willing to... Put yourself out there like Christ. You're not willing to, you know, you, you should test yourself, see if you're even saved. If you're not willing to bear that burden of, be, of crushing people. Because the, gos the, gospel, the gospel both crushes and saves. So tell the true gospel, though. Tell all the pieces. All right? Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk, and I'll see you next time. Bye.